What's up, Navigating Academia family? This is Dr. J. Phoenix Singh. It's a pleasure to have you here with me as always. Today, I'm coming to you to be able to answer a very valued viewer's question. You guys know I love you. I don't get paid for this channel, so please do hit the like button. Give us a big old thumbs up. Helps us out with the YouTube algorithm, and it also thanks me for the time that I spend doing these videos for you. I no longer offer free consultation sessions because you guys are so awesome that I literally have been getting dozens upon dozens the one week I literally got over a hundred requests which is insane but a total blessing so what I tried to do for you guys instead is to be able to answer viewer questions that are high sensitivity in other words they can be applied to as many of the thousands upon thousands of navigating academia subscribers that we've got we as a community are very very caring and we always want to be helping one another out you know, academia is so cutthroat, and it's one of these situations where it's hard to be able to find a community that is mutually supportive, and that is what the Navigating Academia community is all about. So, let's jump right into it after you've liked and subscribed. Question today is from Gloria. Gloria, you rock. Thank you so much for your question. Let's go ahead and get into it. Gloria's question is... I was delighted to find out that you, i.e. Dr. Singh, went to grad school in Germany, which is true. My second doctor is from uh, University of Constance in Germany, something that I'm interested in doing. However, I have some concerns. Number one, I know that psychiatry, counseling, and therapy work is largely culture and language dependent, which is true. Number two, additionally, I learned that there might be different licensing requirements from different countries or states. Number three, lastly, some PhD degrees might be recognized in one, in one country, I'm assuming you meant, but not another. It really feels like a muddy river to tread. Would you be able to share your experiences with cross-culture study, getting your expertise recognized in a foreign country? What are the things one needs to consider when they do grad school in psychology in a different country? Thank you so much, Dr. Singh. Okay, very, very kind. Thank you, Gloria, for the question. Guys, this is a big deal. If you are considering doing a doctorate in a country that you do not intend to live in long term, there is a lot of stuff that we need to go through. Now, again, like Gloria mentioned, I've got two doctorates. The doctorates are both in countries that are not the United States, which is my primary residence right now. So my first doctorate is in psychiatry from Oxford, and my second doctorate is in clinical psychology from University of Constance, which is in southern Germany. So you're absolutely right. Neither my doctorate are from the country that I live in right now. And yeah, if I wanted to basically convert a clinical license from a different country to this one, that would be a massive challenge. Uh, it is not something where basically you move and you just say, okay, you know, how do I just, you know, transfer that license over? You don't need to do any conversion classes or anything like this. The reason why this is important to take into consideration is that the regulatory bodies in different countries oftentimes have different requirements. Everything from uh, what kind of a practicum you had to complete, like in the uh, US, it has to be an APA approved practicum site. Has to be, right? If you want to be a clinical psychologist. So it's one of these situations where if I'm in a different country where obviously APA rules don't apply and there aren't any APA sites in Switzerland, for example, or in Germany, it makes perfect sense that there's going to be some sort of a conversion mechanism. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Even within a country like the United States, just because you're licensed in one state does not mean that you are automatically licensed in another state. There are certainly some states where if you get licensed in them, you do have kind of an, uh, an automatic license in other ones. But that is kind of the exception and not the rule. So you need to know that from the jump. Now, usually the reason why you would get licensed in one state that, uh, you know, for whatever reason, you don't end up staying there. It's usually because you end up moving for a job or you have a partner or a spouse and, you know, they get a job somewhere else. Uh, you know, you have a family and you want to be close. You have kiddos and you want to be closer to your parents or your partner's parents. I totally get it. People move for all sorts of different reasons. I've moved for all sorts of different reasons. Uh, so I'm not telling you that you've done anything wrong. If you find yourself in a circumstance where you're moving countries, you're moving states or provinces, you name it. So like the last thing I want you to do is to think that there's anything wrong or that this doesn't happen all the time because it really does. So what I did is I've kind of written out for you, Gloria, kind of four considerations that I want you to take into account as you kind of go on this journey. And if you want, Gloria, you can write to me below and you can tell me, you know, why is it that Germany is a country that you're, you're interested in doing a doctorate in? Now, the one thing that's a huge blessing is literally, I think the cost of my entire doctorate was like maybe a few hundred to a few thousand euros versus the, the cost of my doctorate at Oxford was uh, a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. All right. 
So it's uh, that, you know, is a totally reasonable reason if it's financial, right? Make sure that uh, your degree means the same thing. This is number one, okay? Make sure your degree means the same thing in one country to another. I'm not talking about it meaning the same thing with regards to um, basically it converting automatically from a clinical degree in one country to being clinically licensed in another. What I mean is that, like, let's say that you and I, let's just say that, Gloria, we're living in the United States. If I say an MD, a medical doctor, you're going to be like, yo, that's what you need if you want to be like, let's say, a, a GP, general practitioner, if you want to be you know, family medicine person, if you want to be an OBGYN, et cetera, you need that MD, you need that medical doctorate. In the UK, the equivalent is what's called a BSc Med. So it's like a bachelor's degree, but it really highly specializes in medicine. And you can get an MD if you wanted to, but an MD is not the same. It doesn't mean the same thing in the UK. And if you really want to go deep into a specific area of medicine from a research perspective, you get a DPhil, which is our equivalent of the US of a PhD. Technically, I'm a DPhil Oxon PhD, which would be a Dr. Rare Not, right? Which is like, Jay, what the heck are you talking about, right? Well, in the UK, I've got a DPhil in psychiatry with specialization in forensics. Nobody in the US knows what the hell a DPhil is. DPhil is literally doctorate in philosophy, right? Or doctorate in philosophy or of philosophy. And in the US, we have PhD, which means the identical thing. It's the same degree. Now, people get really weird in the US, basically, because let's put it this way. I remember getting the DPhil in psychiatry. There's this really rude guy in forensic psych who thinks he's a really big deal. And the guy told me uh, that, you know, you're not allowed to call yourself a psychologist because you don't have a doctorate in psychiatry psychology and you're not allowed to call yourself a psychiatrist because you don't have a medical doctorate so you should just you know not refer to yourself as anything and this is one of these old guard type guys let me tell you old guard type people there are so many amazing ones who are just the best mentors and then there's some that are just egotistical as hell right and they're incredibly annoying and they take it upon themselves to be walking bringers of pain in terms of just making you feel bad if you're an early career professional when that guy told me this I was 23 years old I was a child right and this is the kind of age where people on that international stage seem to mean a whole lot my running joke which is not absolutely a joke is if people are really intimidated by an academic you need to ask yourself could I take them in a fight in an alley because if the answer is yes probably shouldn't be super intimidated by them right so that's my little running joke but you know it's also got some truth to it because people are so afraid of these big name people and unfortunately there are the types of big name people in fields who get a really big head which is absolutely ridiculous uh you know it's one of these things as you get bigger in academia the last thing you want to do is to get arrogant egotistical think that you're better than anybody else because that's foolish it's just not true okay so my PhD in psychiatry over there in the US, there really is no such thing as a PhD in psychiatry. So that definitely caused me some problems, especially from people who just, for whatever reason, didn't want to respect the degree, even though it's an Oxford degree. It was super annoying, right? So just make sure the degree kind of ends up meaning the same thing, okay? Second piece of advice, Gloria, for you is I really do recommend only doing a clinical program in a country that you desire to live in long term. Things can change. Like I said, you get married, you have kids, uh, God forbid somebody in the family family gets sick, you got to move. I get it. But if you want to do the doctorate in Germany, but you have no intention of long-term living in Germany, if you think to yourself, well, you know, I'll get the doctorate, then I'll live there for a year or two, then I definitely want to end up in Canada, in Australia, in Belgium, in wherever it is. Uh, don't do the doctorate in Germany. Do the doctorate where you want to live. Uh, yeah. Could it be harder to get into those schools? Yeah, it could be, right? But it's also kind of the smart decision. So I definitely only recommend doing a clinical program in a country that you want to live in uh, long-term. Uh, the third one is if your long-term plan is research, you want to be a researcher. Um, so for example, remember, we always talk on this channel about scholar practitioner models uh, and the scholar always comes first, right? Scholar practitioner, not practitioner scholar. Okay. A lot of these clinical psychology PhD programs, that's what they are. They're not side -E programs. They're not like straight up clinical programs, right? It's a combo of both. If you want to be a researcher, like for me, after I did my first degree, I'm like research all the way. That's what I wanted to do until I did the second doctorate, the clinical doctorate. But the reason I did the clinical doctorate is because there was this influential guy who I really trusted down in my postdoc in Florida. He retired, and the day before I left for Switzerland, uh, I asked him what his advice was to me in terms of my career. And he said, let me tell you, son, uh, I love your work. I read your research. I think it's really well written, but I can tell that you've never seen a patient in your life 
And I was like, what? Like, I was so young. And I, I mean, this is valuable guidance. So I was like, really? I said, I didn't understand. I, I don't know why. He's like, I read your discussion section and you give clinical implications. And in your clinical implications, even though they make sense at base value, it's impossible for clinicians to actually do what you're asking. They don't have the time. They don't have the resources. They don't have, you know, X, Y, and Z. They don't have those things. So I can tell that you've never seen a clinical client. So my advice to you would be to go and get a clinical degree or at least spend a lot of time with clinicians. And I took that to heart. And that was a really hard thing to hear. It's never fun to hear criticism, but it's a very valuable point. So this is the reason I have two doctorates instead of one, because the first one was research focused and the second was clinical focused. So in any case, that was the deal there, but I never intended on being a full-time clinician, a full-time practitioner. And as I've explained in other videos, the reason is I take it home. I'm a hyper empathic person. And so because of that, like, uh, you know, working with the types of uh, offenders and such, you know, types of individuals that I've worked with, you take that home and it's just not for me. What I always tell people is you don't have to be a therapist to help people. You don't need to be a doctor to help people. You can be a good friend to your friends. You can lend an ear. You know, just look at Carl Rogers' famous research in terms of the fact that, you know, literally just being a kind person who, you know, knows certain things, just like mirroring things back, you know, giving, you know, nonverbal feedback to people, allowing them to speak, being a good listener. These things are very clinically effective and you don't need a clinical degree to do them. You just need to be somebody who practices you know, being emotionally intelligent. So I think that that happens a lot. A lot of people say they want to be therapists and they actually get into the game and they're like, this is not what I thought it was going to be. I don't want to do this. So I definitely understand that. That's kind of what happened to me. Uh, the only difference is that for me, I got into the clinical game knowing that about myself, but I did it to inform my research base, right? So again, that scholar practitioner model, okay? But if your long-term plan is research, you can go anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter. Really follow the supervisor. Who is the person who is kind of a young gun in the field, assistant professor, associate professor, who's aggressively going after grants, aggressively going after publications and the highest impact factor journals, is very well connected with other rising stars in the field with other mid-career tried and true allies those are the people that i want you to link up with regardless of the country that you go to all right and remember skill sets are skill sets logistic regression in belgium is the same as logistic regression in israel okay so this is one of these things it's the reason i love stats and it's the reason i love experimental methodology you know gold standard rct methodology in australia is the same as gold standard rct methodology in estonia that's just the way that it is build the skill sets Build those research-based skill sets. Super important, right? Uh, and research is research. If you get, uh, to be honest with you, I only recommend publishing in, uh, let's put it this way, as high impact as you can get publications in English. That's what I recommend. It's not that I think that English is like the greatest language ever. I actually prefer German to English because it's a lot more rules-based and I'm a rules-based guy, as you know. But it's definitely a situation where the largest circulation and the largest readership of journals uh, is journals in the aggregate in English, okay? Uh, and a lot of very high prestige journals, depending on the field, like, uh, like in general medicine, for example, you've got BMJ, New England Journal of Medicine, you've got the Lancet, you know, you've got all these different journals that are really, really big deal journals, uh, massive, mega high impact journals, and they're all in English. So really across fields, that's what you're going to find. And if you publish a high impact medical piece and you happen to live in Jordan, okay, that is going to be just as respected as if you publish in that same journal and you happen to be from Canada. All right, so research is research. So that's the other thing that I have to say there. Clinical work, you're absolutely right. Regulations, uh, best practice standards, legally speaking, and in terms of regulatory agencies, those are gonna change by country. This is a big reason that I recommend only doing a clinical program in a country you wanna live in uh, in the long term. Uh, some countries, like in the US, you can take these conversion courses. They're anywhere between one to several years. It depends on the state. That can be really, really annoying. There's no way I would ever do that. Just that per personal take. You can do it if you want. Uh, I would not do that because I have way too much fun doing other things like doing, you know, grad school consulting. So if anybody's interested in setting up one-on-one -on -one appointments with me, you're more than welcome to do so. It'd be a pleasure to work with you. Uh, I run companies, uh, all of which are somehow related to academia. And uh, it's a joy for me. I have a lot of fun doing it. And I get to make these YouTube videos for you. So anyway, Gloria, that's my guidance for you. Thank you so much again for your question. If you're still watching this video, God bless you. And please make sure to like this video, subscribe, share the video on your favorite social media accounts. I appreciate you. Peace.